Do you have Windows 11 running on a potato? Well, today I'm going to show you how to make it run a little less like a potato and more like a system you'd actually want to use on a regular basis. Stay tuned. Recently, I've posted several videos on how to install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. And in those videos, I've made jokes that we're putting Windows 11 on a potato. And in many cases, that's true. I've seen your guys' comments, and I know some of you have Windows 11 running on some really low-end systems. So, I figured today I would make a video on how you might be able to squeeze just a little bit more performance out of those systems. Also, following these tips could help your performance on systems that aren't potatoes. So, let's get to it. Okay, so you have Windows 11 running on a potato and you'd like to make it a little bit faster. Now for this example, I'm definitely not using a potato. I'm using a system that's fairly capable. But, these tips should be able to help anyone running Windows 11. So the first thing that we want to do is disable startup apps. And this one's fairly obvious, but let me show you how to do it. There's a couple different ways. If we click on Start and go into Settings, and then from Settings, we want to go into Apps, and then we want to go into Startup. So we're going to go all the way to the bottom here into Startup. And this right here will show you all the different apps that you have running on the system. You can also change the sorting too by name to status, or you can even sort it by startup impact. So the ones here that have the highest impact are the ones that hit the system the hardest when it's starting up. So you can actually go through here and uncheck these from this section here. Or there's another way you can do it as well. If you right click on your taskbar, then click on task manager, then from within task manager, you wanna go into startup. So when you go into startup, you'll see all your different startup apps right here. And if you wanna stop one, you would just click on it and you would click disable from the list right here. Now it seems kind of obvious that disabling startup apps should speed up your system, but believe it or not, I see a lot of systems that have tons of stuff in the startup that simply don't need to be there. So going through here and auditing your startup programs every once in a while, it's a really good idea. Okay, so the next thing we wanna look at, I'm gonna go ahead and close these right here, and then we wanna go into our different visual effects that we can disable within Windows 11 to kinda of give us a little bit more of a boost in performance. And from there, we're gonna stay in settings right here, and then we're gonna go into personalization. And from personalization, I want you to go into colors, and then from there, we're gonna pick on transparency effects right here. And if we uncheck that, it will disable a lot of the transparency effects within Windows 11. So if we click on the Start menu, as you can see, my Start menu right now is solid. But if I flip this back on and open the Start menu, you can see that there's a slight little transparency within there. By disabling transparency effects from within Windows 11 should help you to increase your performance, especially if you're on a potato. Now this might not do much for you if you're on a faster system, System, but if you're on a really low spec system, then I highly recommend doing this. It'll help you out a lot. And then the next thing that we wanna do, we can go ahead and close settings now, and we're gonna click on start, and we're gonna search for advanced system settings. So if we just start typing it, you'll see right here, view advanced system settings. And we open that up. We're gonna to wanna to look at the performance section right here. And we click on settings here. Right here will give you all the different appearance settings from within Windows 11. Now you could just click on adjust for best performance and it'll unselect all of them. However, that's probably not the best way to go. Now in this section right here, what you wanna do is you wanna find a balance between appearance and performance because obviously you don't want Windows 11 looking like garbage, but then at the same time, you want it running a little faster too. So I would go through these settings and select the ones that you think help your performance the best and kinda of try to find a balance between performance and appearance so that you can get not only a good looking Windows 11, but a system that actually runs kind of okay too. So let's get back to it. Okay, so some other settings that we can change here. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this and close out. And then we're gonna to wanna to go back into Windows settings. And from here, we wanna disable some of the Xbox features in here because honestly, we really don't need them. And to do that, all we have to do is click on gaming here. And there's two different settings that I'm gonna want you to change here. If we go into Xbox game bar right here, if we click on that and then uncheck the game bar right here, and then we're gonna go back into gaming and we're gonna click on game mode. And then from game mode, we can uncheck that too. Now in this section here, if you're running a potato, you're probably not playing games. So if that's the case, you can pretty much disregard these settings completely. You don't need these features if you're not playing games in your system. So disabling them should help your performance some. 
Okay, so the next section right here, and this one I think is going to have among the biggest impacts to increase your performance, and that's going to be disabling services. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and close settings here. We're going to click on the start button and just search for services. And when you find that, we want to open up the services app. And then from the services app, we're going to want to go through here and pick different services to disable. Now, this is going to be all dependent on what you use your system for. So the services you disable might not be the same as the services I disable, but I'm going to go through and give you a couple of examples of ones that I typically like to disable. Like first off, the connected user experience and telemetry. This is essentially Windows telemetry, and you don't need it on any system for that matter, but especially on a potato. So we're going to scroll down until we find it here. So right here, connected user experience and telemetry. We're gonna open that up and then we're gonna select from automatic. We wanna change this to disabled. And then from disabled, you can click on stop to stop the service right there. And then once you have it stopped, you can go ahead and hit okay and it should disable the service. Now from there, let's go through some of these other services real quick and this will just be a few that I recommend disabling. The next one would be downloaded map manager. Everything should be in alphabetical order. So right here, downloaded map manager. So this one's originally set to automatic. We're going to open it. We're going to select this one to disabled and hit OK. And then from there, we want to go to our fax service. Now, if you're not sending and receiving faxes, obviously you don't need this service, but it is set to manual. So if you're not sending faxes, the service probably isn't affecting you anyway, but it doesn't hurt disabling it. So if you turn it off, then you don't have to worry about it at all. But just keep in mind, you won't be able to send faxes anymore. But then again, if you don't have a modem, you can't really send faxes anyway. But moving right along, the next one I could recommend is geolocation. This is another one that you really don't need unless you're making use of the service. So you're gonna to wanna to find it on the list here, and here it is right here, geolocation service, and it's currently running. So if we open that up, we can go ahead and switch it from manual to disabled. We can stop it. And then from that point, we can go ahead and hit OK to save our settings. And then the next one that I would recommend changing is system main. The reason I recommend disabling system main is because with Windows 11, honestly, you should be running an SSD. And if you're running an SSD, this service is doing nothing for you. It's doing nothing but wasting resources. So we go to automatic to disabled and we hit stop. And that's all you need to do on this one. And then go ahead and hit OK, and you can see that System Main has been disabled. And then from this point, the last one that I would recommend disabling is Windows Search. Now, Windows Search, this one here, you want to be careful if you disable this, because this literally will disable Windows Search service. If you're using services like Windows Shadow Copy and things of that nature, then this is going to really mess up your day, because you need Windows Search to be running in order for certain things to function on the computer. So I would only do this in extreme cases. However, this one service right here can save you a ton of resources. So I personally disable it, but, but you choose what's best for your system. Now, there isn't just one single rule for all services on a Windows PC because some of these services might actually hinder your use of the PC, and you're going to want to keep that in mind. Now, in some cases, some services like telemetry, I think everyone can disable that and we can get along okay. However, other services like Windows Search, those ones, it's all going to depend on whether or not you need the service or not. Windows Search does help with performance issues greatly. I mean, you can really speed up a system by disabling Windows Search. However, if you need it, then you need it. Now, when it comes to system main, I did a couple videos on that a while back, and you can check those out to see what conclusion I came to. But to be honest with you, just to kind of spoiler alert right now, I didn't see much difference. And when it comes to SSDs, system main isn't being used anyway. System main disables itself for SSD drives. And if you're running Windows 11 and you're not on an SSD drive, then... There's not much I can do to help you. Your system's gonna be slow. So upgrade to an SSD, it's really important. Let's get back to it. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna look at right now is background apps. Now background apps, this is a little bit different than startup apps, but it's kind of in the same category. But let me show you what I'm talking about. If we click on start, we're gonna go into settings real quick, and then we're gonna go back into apps like we were before. And then we wanna go into installed apps. And then from installed apps, you can see that we have a bunch of different apps listed that are on the system. So what we can do in here is we can choose an app that we aren't using most of the time, and we can make a couple of decisions here. So if we go over, I'm just going to use calculator as an example. So if we go over here, we click the three little dots and we go into advanced options. 
from advanced options, we can actually tell it whether or not this app is allowed to run in the background when the app's not being used. Now, if I click on this and I hit never, Windows won't allow this app to stay open in the background if it's not in use. Now, you can still use the application, but the application won't run in the background all the time. And this might come in handy if you have a program that you don't want to uninstall, but you don't want to run in the background either. So hopefully this will be helpful. Now, the next one we're gonna jump into real quick is our power plan. And this one, I've used this one before as an example in other videos, but I can't stress enough how much this really does make a difference on a Windows PC. So let me show you how to change it. So if you click on your start button, we're gonna go ahead and click on control panel and open our control panel up. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and select hardware and sound. And then from there, we wanna select power options. And then from power options, you can see that right now my system is set to balanced. So I have two different choices, either balanced or power saving. Now, what I wanna do is go ahead and show additional options. And as you can see, I have high performance here. If you don't have high performance, which some systems don't, you can go ahead and click on create power plan here, and you can create a high performance plan if you wanted to. But since we already have it, I'm gonna go ahead and select high performance. And there's one more thing that you can actually do that might help you a little bit. So just go ahead and check this real quick. It's probably fine, but go ahead and check it anyway. Click on change plan settings. And then from there, you want to change advanced power settings. And then from here, you want to scroll all the way down. So where it says processor power management, go ahead and open this up and it'll have minimum and maximum processor state. And if you open these up, make sure they're both set to hundred percent. If you're selecting the performance plan, it should already be that way. But if it isn't, go ahead and select that now. Now, the next thing that we're gonna look at today, we're gonna look at removing unused apps. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and click the start button. I'm gonna open up control panel again. From control panel, I wanna go to uninstall program. And this is the list of programs that you have installed on your system. Now, I recommend every once in a while going through these programs and making sure that you don't have something that you really don't want. Like for instance, I have CD Burner XP which is a pretty good CD writer program. However, this computer doesn't even have a CD-ROM burner in it. So there's no point in having a program like this installed on the computer. So to uninstall it, you just click on it, click on uninstall, hit yes, and go ahead and go through the uninstall process in order to get the program off your computer. And once it's off, kind of just go through the list and see if there's anything else in here that you simply just don't need. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at today is restartable apps. So we're going to go ahead and close control panel. We're going to go back into settings here. And then from here, we're going to go into accounts. And then from accounts, we want to go into sign in options. And then from sign in options, you want to go down into where it says automatically save my restartable apps and restart them when I sign back in. By unchecking this, it should speed up your boot up a little bit by not having apps open while you're booting up your system. Now, while we're in settings, I'm going to go ahead and jump back over here into system. And then from system, we want to go into notifications. Now, notifications, these things not only can be annoying, but they can take up system resources as well. So what you can do is you can either go down and unselect the specific application that you don't want to give notifications or you can just turn notifications off altogether. The other thing too is, is while you're here, I would highly recommend to scroll down to the bottom and click on additional settings. And from additional settings, you'll notice that there's a bunch of settings still checked here. Now, even though I've unchecked notifications up top, it's still gonna give me these notifications. So these are essentially just Microsoft spam. It shows Windows welcome experience, um, best ways to use Windows. So go ahead and uncheck right here and it should disable notifications completely. I see what you did there, Microsoft. Hiding that in additional settings, that was kind of shifty of you, but we're figuring you out. So while we're on the subject of performance on your system, one thing that can drastically affect your performance is your antivirus. Lots of people run extremely bloated third-party antiviruses, and this is going to hurt your system performance probably more than anything else. And if you already have a potato, you're not gonna wanna lose the rest of your resources to your antivirus. So what I personally recommend is just uninstalling third-party antiviruses and running Windows security. It comes with your computer, and it's free. You can't be free, right? Okay, so the next tip I'm gonna give you is a really easy one. Pay really close attention because this one here is really important. And what that tip is, is restart your computer. Believe it or not, that's the whole tip. Click on start, click on the little power button, and actually push restart. Don't hit shutdown, hit restart. 
Windows uses a technology called hybrid shutdown. I believe they've been using this since Windows 10. However, it might be in Windows 8. I can't remember if it was or not. But essentially what it is, is it's a hybrid between regular shutdown and hibernation. It hibernates a lot of the Windows services so that when you boot the system back up again, it doesn't have to launch them over again. Now this does help with your boot up time. So it's definitely something that you want to keep enabled because it does make the system boot up faster. However, if you have an issue with a service on the system, simply shutting it down and turning it back on again probably won't help the problem, you know? Turning it on and off again really kind of doesn't work in those cases. So what I would recommend doing is actually restarting the system. When you tell the system to restart, then it forces it to go through a full restart. And by doing that, it has to launch all those services again and it bypasses the hybrid shutdown. So hopefully that'll help. Believe it or not, I have actually fixed a lot of computers by simply restarting them. It's kind of amazing if you think about it. Now you're probably going to have mixed results with how much performance you can realistically squeeze out of some systems. You know, some systems are just slow and they're gonna be slow. For Windows 11, I recommend at least a quad core processor and eight gigs of RAM. And please run an SSD drive. You don't want Windows 11 on a mechanical drive. These are the same system requirements that I recommend for Windows 10. However, they become much more important with Windows 11. Now these are the absolute minimum system requirements that I personally recommend for Windows 10 and 11. If your system doesn't even meet these requirements, then unfortunately, it might be time for an upgrade. I mean, the tips that I've given you today are going to help, but that help is gonna be relative to what your system specs are. And while we're at it, I also recommend keeping your system up to date. There have been many updates to Windows 11 that have come out since its release that have dealt specifically with performance issues. And it's not only Windows updates specifically that can help you with performance, but also driver updates. Hardware manufacturers will tweak their drivers over time to make them more efficient. So if you're having performance issues, it's worth at least trying to update your device drivers themselves. And for that, check out this video where I go through a program that will update all of your drivers for you. These programs are typically really spammy and I found that this one actually works pretty good and it's free. You guys have a great day.